Welcome back to a CoinGeek Conversation special. This week, we've chosen three interviews with some of the most exciting technologists in the Bitcoin SV space. Later, we'll be hearing from Luke Roanaz, co-founder and CEO of TonicPow, and Richard Baker, former CEO of Geospock. Our first interviewee, though, is Dean Little, founder and CEO of Bitping, a distributed network intelligence solution. Charles Miller had the chance to catch up with Dean at 2019's CoinGeek conference in Seoul. Not long after, Bitping, then known as Uptime SV, had just been crowned the winner of the first ever Bitcoin SV hackathon. Here he explains the company's mission and USP. So uh, for us, we're, we're not just interested in building our business on this blockchain, but we're also looking at how we can uh, build solutions to the problems that we've come up against in building on this chain so that uh, we can release those to other people so that we can uh, rapidly increase the value of our own investment. Um, so we've been working on a lot of solutions um, to, to sort of the problems that we've come up against in terms of uh, things like uh, transaction management, uh, identity and um, address resolution, things like that. So we've been mostly focused on building the solutions that our business will be built on. That hackathon was intended to encourage people who were going to help uh, onboard yes. users yes. to Bitcoin SV. Yes. It seems like you have hit upon something that could be a useful business yes. in itself, yes. and not just a sort of manipulative way of onboarding people. Is that right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think um, so with with uptime testing, uh, I guess the very simple, the simplest way I could sell this as a use usable business. If you're asking one of the big enterprise customers like Amazon or Tencent in China or, uh, you know, Microsoft, is my website online or not? If they say your website is offline, it's probably offline. But if they say your website is online, it doesn't necessarily mean it's online to your end users because they're using a very different type of architecture, hardware, software, DNS solutions to what your typical end user is running. And until this point in history, it's never been possible for me to send a very, very small fee to somebody to run a check like this. So um, consider trying to do something like that with PayPal. You know, there'd be like 40 cents in fees to send you a one cent reward for checking if my website's online. So this data is uh, much more valuable than uh, what, what a big uh, enterprise customer could actually give you. However, until this point in history, there's never been the money mobility to enable that to happen. Um, so it's a, it's a very exciting uh, place to be. Uh, right. So yeah. as I understand it, you're recruiting sort of the little guy yep. to do the work, yep. checking whether these sites are online, for instance, yep. and they get paid a small amount of BSV Correct. for their services. I mean, sort of in a way, it should be an easy sell because as a as a one of your testers, it, it's just sort of free money, basically, isn't it? More or less. I mean, there are some considerations they may want to make. Like, for example, uh, we also offer load time testing, right? Now, if someone had a 100 megabyte website that's very poorly optimized, you know, they might not want to be doing that on mobile data, but uh, on, because they'd have to pay, right? But um, you know. At the same time, if that's uh, if that's what we're dealing with, if that's uh, sort of problems that we come up against, we can price around that. Mm. So uh, it's very much uh, a market that is that has never existed, and therefore there's no way to really do price discovery other than just going out and doing it. Um, but yeah, we definitely foresee that it's going to be very cost effective, and this data is going to be worth a lot more than um, you know in terms of business intelligence um, than. Uh, what any of the big providers can uh, can actually give you, uh, especially in, in terms of things like uh, internet censorship, political stuff. Um, what you mean, so that you'll ask users in different places whether they can see something, is that right? Right, so like uh, recently uh, in, in, in uh, Australia, we've had certain websites blocked by ISPs. So the same has happened in Hong Kong. The same happens whenever you know, there's a there's a political uprising somewhere where people are unhappy with their government. Their government shuts down the internet. So um, it's it's important for people to be able to sort of uh, see 
what what's going on like i fully support um uh i fully support someone's uh right to um you know try to enact laws in their country even if i disagree with them um but to do so without transparency is is wrong it certainly is kudos to dean for his political efforts and next up we have luke rowanaz ceo of tonic pal a bitcoin sv powered network that allows users to earn money by sharing website links here he is explaining why he chose to build the network on Bitcoin SV and the disruptive effect shared protocols can bring to social media. How innovative is this? I mean, it's innovative in the world of Bitcoin SV, but outside of that, there are some uh, businesses that are in a similar sort of space to this, I guess, aren't there? Yeah, there are. And there's lots of there's lots of similar similar takes and different uh, products that are out there that do, um, you know, social media marketing type stuff like this. Um, you know, where we end up shining is when you start to count up the various little edges that Bitcoin gives you. Um, one is like not having to build the entire payment management system and reconcile all that and settle it and worry about chargebacks and all that sort of a thing. So there's a whole whole big chunk of efficiency that gets gained there. Um, the transparency that kind of comes along with having these things all on an, on an immutable ledger and, you know, third parties can build software that just does tonic power analytics and have an entire company just dedicated to delivering even improved analytics on what we offer, maybe. Not to mention the obvious one, which is the simple fact that we can do micropayments. Um, you know, so there's a there's a number of little things that really do add up and give us an edge, and it's just a better it's just a better place to build something like this. Well, also I think it's a brilliant uh, concept because it's drawing people into the Bitcoin economy who don't even need to know that they're part of it somehow. And and you yeah. know you might you might just start off by being. Um, a, a visitor and then you become a promoter and then you become an advertiser and you sure. will come closer and closer to the center of the circle and probably more and more aware or interested in how this all works which is through bitcoin sv but um it's it's perfect in that in that it draws people in that's that, that was the on onboarding side of it i guess right and you know one of the big things for us is you, know, you can create an account and actually start getting esv without technically without ever even having a wallet and you don't even need to know what a wallet is. You just sign up for a website and start sharing some links and you're earning money. Um, we are basically holding a wallet for you at that point, And then you could add a payout address later. Oh, and right. So you don't even need to have a money button or anything set up. No, that's interesting. Technically, no. But yeah, yeah so you, that, that then you just build up credit with tonic power and right. Yeah. And then, you know, we have an opportunity to 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 check it out and make sure that it all looks looks legit. But in general, it's very easy to see. I mean, when when we look at something that is legit, there's there's common there's common patterns. I, I saw one interview where you you talked about um, going after the tech giants with Tonic Power as it develops. Uh, I wonder whether you could just say something about. How I think you, you, you use the phrase by using the network effect of the shared database of the BSV blockchain. So just can you just sort of explain that to me? How, what did you how is that going to work? So, you know, it might be an easier example to think of even a different type of product when you think about this effect that I'm that I'm describing with the, with the network effect. But, you know, there's one major untapped uh, piece of potential that lies in Bitcoin that hasn't really been um, pushed uh, much at all yet. And that is this, the idea of these open, of open protocols that are universally used by many companies. And one, where, one place you might imagine this is in a social network or something where you have a universal set of rules for what the data structure is like for a post, for a like, for a follow, for all of these various elements that make up the social network. And you know, if I created a regular social network like a Facebook clone tomorrow, there's basically a 0% chance that I can succeed because, you know, it's the, you know, the, I don't know if there's a name for this, but like the, the crowded bar dilemma, right? Like where 
you know, everybody wants to go to the most happening bar, but like if it's empty, nobody goes in and like, how do you get, you know, one step to lead to the other to lead to the ultimate result. But that is the network Basically. effect, really, isn't it? I think. Right. You have to have the most popular bar in town to yeah. kind of draw the. No one's, in no one's ever wants to be the first person into an empty restaurant. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. But now with shared protocols, you have a very different effect. You have this effect where I've got my little site, but I'm reading all of this other data from all these other applications and ingesting them in. So to a visitor, they look. This looks like a full bar, right? This looks like lots of people are commenting and acting, but really I just launched this website today. But there's all this activity going on. Well, you know what to do, guys. Share the link on social media and earn some BSV with Tonic Pow. Our final guest this week is Richard Baker, former CEO of Geospock, a space-time analytics database. He now sits on the board of directors at TAL. Here he is talking about the potential value IoT devices can bring to our lives and the opportunity for Bitcoin SV to move into the lucrative cloud market. So when you're thinking about a smart city, actually the, the thing that comes to mind is it's about contextual intelligence. What, what is happening as an ecosystem is what you're trying to get to. I'll give you a, a quick illustration of that, which is let's project forward 10 years and we're thinking about autonomous vehicles trying to run through a city. Uh, Cars will communicate to each other, uh, but cars will be communicating to the infrastructure. So how does an autonomous vehicle make a decision on whether it's safe to overtake the vehicle in front of it or not? Well, it can make a near field decision about, I can't see anything on the road. The car in front of me is going slower. I can overtake. But what it needs to know is that there's an emergency vehicle just one mile up the road coming at a particular speed, and it isn't safe for that autonomous vehicle to take the decision. And this is contextual intelligence. And so our role in a smart city is about bringing those data sets together so we can ultimately be part of the mobility network and making sure that, that those decisions can be safe. So now you're, you've been speaking at the uh, CoinGeek conference and we haven't used the word uh, Bitcoin or blockchain so far. So how, how does that come into all this? Yeah, so... Um, Delighted to be at this conference, Charles. It's been an amazing experience. And yeah, I think we've noticed really as a company that around the world, uh, cities, transport companies, automotive companies have all started to adopt proof of concepts and trials of different digital ledger technologies. So we've seen blockchain certainly rise as a new technology, as an alternative technology to uh, other mechanisms. So for us, you know, in in the way that we index data today and we post that data to the Amazon cloud and we store it on disk drives in Amazon, why isn't Bitcoin SV both in terms of protocol but also in terms of what organizations like Tal are doing, the alternative store? And so we, we really see a, a, a situation where today we're dealing with event information coming from sensors but actually the next step is really dealing with the commercial transactions. So again, a very quick illustration is in the next few years, you and I really shouldn't have to worry about waving our credit card in front of a, you know, electric vehicle charging point. We should be able to plug in our car and our car ultimately settles for the amount of time that it's been on the charging station in a public space. That ultimately will become a machine to machine commercial transaction. And I think we see an opportunity here where Bitcoin SV becomes the digital ledger of choice for those types of transactions in, in the machine to machine economy. Right. So you're not particularly talking about Bitcoin SV as a data storage medium. We, we would talk about it both in terms of it's a transaction uh, infrastructure, it's a storage infrastructure, and ultimately our, our role with that would be that you know we would hope to become the analytics translation layer of that underlying data store. But if you're working with a local council to get their traffic information, for instance, do you have to sort of ingest all that data before you process it? And at the moment, it's going to AWS, I guess, is it? Will, will it continue to go there when you're working more closely with BSV? Uh, I think it will. You know, our, our observation, of course, is we're, <laughs> we're replacing, or society is probably, and industry is replacing one set of silos with potentially uh, another set of silos. You know, we, 
uh, see probably in the Western economies, Google, Microsoft Azure, and Amazon Web Services as the dominant cloud players. They're not the dominant cloud players when you move to Asia. You know, we've got Ali Cloud and Tencent, and, and ultimately customers, industry is making choices between these kind of dominant six to nine cloud infrastructure companies. So at the moment, and probably for the next five to 10 years, what was enterprise storage and having it on site is moving to cloud, and those players are ultimately getting the benefit of that migration. The big opportunity, but equally a challenge for digital ledger technology like uh, Bitcoin SV is, is how to move into that market, how to become an alternative to those big cloud vendors. AWS, watch out. There we go. Three of Bitcoin SV's finest technology experts. What will they come up with next? Next week, we'll be featuring three interviews with educators from the Bitcoin SV space. Don't miss it. Thanks for watching this CoinGeek Conversation special. And please join me, Natalie Mason, again next week. Till then, goodbye. Is greatness really just for a chosen few? For prodigies? For superstars? It's not planned. It's experienced by those with great support and some resilience. For those that strive to go to the edge once more, pushed and guided with excellent support. Support that provides groundbreaking technology by and for those that know it's all about velocity.